All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about memorizing all of the notes on your guitar and just how important it is to be able to do this. And I know people struggle with this um, quite often, and it doesn't really need to be the, um, the drudgery that it seems to memorize the notes, but it really does make a difference when you stop, when you, when you make the move from just visualizing shapes on your fretboard to actually start seeing functionality and, and how things work and interact with each other, you know, whether it be chords or arpeggios or whatever it might be. Um, it becomes very, very important in your journey. Now, if you don't ever see yourself getting there, then I suppose it probably isn't that important. Um, but I would really love to talk to you about it anyway, in case it is something that you might um, see yourself doing in the future. So the first thing is, is, is how to memorize the notes. It can be overwhelming, all six of these strings and all of these frets. And so what I've done is I, I've, I've figured out a shortcut. Now, you may have learned this before, but I am going to go through it. And then I'm going to show you how to relatively learn all the other strings as well. But basically what you do is you try and pick a string that you want to study. And you need to make sure that you study it in full and you understand it completely before you move on to um, another string. Because if you move too quickly, the problem is, is it just gets messy in your head and you can't really use the information in real time anyway. And really, we always have to remember with guitar playing, that's kind of what's most important is how quickly can we access the information. It's not just do we know it or did we learn it at some point in our lives. It's can we use it and can we use it quickly and efficiently is really the point. So, you know, sitting there getting confused on all the strings doesn't really do you any good because that's might be why you're watching this video anyway, right? Um, so what I did was I created kind of a shortcut to use on each string and we're going to start with the sixth string and I'm going to explain it to you and then we'll go through all the other strings and explain a relative way that you can look at your notes and, um, and then an absolute way and how it can help you. So the first thing is, is understanding that, you know, obviously we need to know the tuning E, A, D, G, B, and E. Now, again, you might tune differently for different reasons and things like that, but for this, our purposes right now, that's what we're doing. So what I'm going to do here is on the E string, what I want to do is I want to memorize all 12 of these notes. And what I figured out a long time ago is if I just had students memorize all 12 notes, it tended to be overwhelming for them and they still had to count. And that's what we're trying to avoid is having to count. We just want to know if someone says seven, we think B or three, we think G or six, we think B flat or whatever it might be. We want to know those absolutely. So what I did was I came up with this little shortcut where what we're going to do is we're just going to learn the prime notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. We're going to learn where those are on the sixth string. We're not going to worry about sharps or flats or anything like that to begin with. We just want to memorize those prime notes and get those embedded in our brain. And once we know those, then let's say those are colored blue, for instance, right? Then the ones in between are the sharps and the flats, and those will start kind of surfacing, and maybe those are colored yellow, right? And we see those a little bit differently because we're viewing them relative to the blue notes, the, the, the prime notes. So what we want to do here is we want to take and utilize the dots on the guitar, okay? Um, and, and again, not every guitar has the same dots. Some people have dots at one, some people don't have dots at all. It's just it just under just kind of follow me here and, and see how this works for you. So if we look at the dots, basically the dots are placed on odd numbered frets. Now I don't have a dot in the first fret, but many people do. I'm looking at one of my ESP guitars sitting over there, and it's got one on the first fret. So some people do, some people don't. But if it did, I'd have one, three, five, seven, and nine. They're located on the odd numbered frets. And then there's there's uh, two dots at the 12th fret. Now the 12th fret isn't an odd number, but that's telling us we've gone an octave. This is E, and this is E. Right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna memorize the notes on the odd numbered frets. Okay, or we're gonna use those as our markers. So the sixth string is E, we know that, and we need to know that, okay? So the first fret of the sixth string is F, and it just is. So for instance, if you thought about it, how hard is it to memorize that the first fret of the sixth string is F? Well, it's not hard at all, right? So F and E, okay? So we've already made a dent. We've got E and F. Well, if we went to the third fret, this note is G. E, F, and G. Now the note in between is actually F sharp, or we could call it G flat. 
F sharp and G flat are the same note, they just have two different names. We refer to that as an enharmonic. So F sharp and G flat. Okay, but let's not worry about that right now. Let's just think about the F and the G. So we have E, F, and G, zero, one, and three. So even if you just started with that for just five minutes and just thought about it and went zero, one, and three, E, F, G, F is at one, G is at three. You just get that straight in your head. Okay, so you're seeing that this isn't, isn't so bad right now. So we have F, G, and then this fret, fifth fret is A. F, G, A, one, three, five. Now, of course, I could do it this way too, but I want you to see the, the, the frets here. So that's why I'm doing this over the top. I don't expect you to do this, okay? So F, G, and A. If we move to the next dot, that's the seventh fret, we now have B. F, G, A, and B. One, three, five, and seven. So what I want to memorize is not only the name of the note, but the fret that it's at. Seven is B. Five is A. Three is G. F is one. And I want to see that in my head. G is three. I want to see that in my head. A is five. B is seven. Okay. And even if I just did that and just memorized that much for a week or whatever, right? Just really get that in my brain. Because the next little part is the screw up that you're going to see on a lot of these other strings as we keep going. Now, if I go to the ninth fret, it has a dot. This was B. This dot right here is not C. This dot right here is C sharp. Now, what we have learned is that the guitar doesn't have dots to correlate with E, F, G, A, and B, and C. The dots are just there to help you visually see the odd numbered frets when you're playing, maybe standing up or whatever, so you don't have to keep looking at the front of your guitar. There's no correlation between the notes in music and the dots, no exact correlation anyway. So we see F worked, G worked, they worked on dots, A and B worked, but now we're on C sharp. So we have a problem there. So what I tell people is think about what surrounds that C sharp, which is C and D. So we're still visualizing this ninth fret, but what we're really looking at it for is to visualize the C and the D that surround it. So what we've learned is when we're learning the notes on the guitar, either the notes will line up with the dots or they're going to surround the dots. F, G, A, B, C, and D. 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, and 10. 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, and 10. F, G, A, B, C, and D. And you just keep telling yourself that over and over and over. And again, C and D, because they surround that dot, don't need to be any scarier, right? You just, you just matter-of-factly learn that. So F is 1, G is 3, A is 5, B is 7, 8 is C, and 10 is D. 1 is F, 3 is G, 5 is A, B is, is, 7 is B. There we go. That's what I meant to say. 8 is C and 10 is D. Okay? So you just memorize that and you think about it. You put your guitar away, you think about it. You grab your guitar, you visualize it, you think about it. It's not just a matter of playing it because really playing it isn't really the point. It's can you see it? Not can you find it? That's the difference. That's the difference in knowing something absolutely and knowing something relatively. If we have to count up, we don't really know it. And if we're in any situation where maybe, um, you know, we're nervous or we don't have a lot of time or whatever the case may be, that's where we're going to run into a problem is, is now we have to try and figure all this stuff out. Well, when you start talking about chords and different notes of different intervals and things like that, you don't, you don't necessarily have all that much time and it can be very confusing. So the more we know of these notes, absolutely the better off we are. So F, G, A, B, C, and D. One, three, five, seven, eight, and ten. That's the premise. Now, your first string would already be memorized because if you know the notes on your sixth string, of course, you know the notes on the first string because they're both E strings. So anything you did here, E, F, G, A, B, C, and D, you know them on your first string as well. Again, that's the logic, but you still have to make sure that you can look down and make that make sense. A, B, C, D, E, right? You want to be able to find those. B, C, D, A, F, G, A, B, C, D. Just think about it a little bit. Just spend some time with it. And if you think about it, even if you just took the sixth string and the first string and you spent a whole month memorizing those notes or whatever, that still means in a year you'd, you'd already know this. In, by next year at this time, you'd have all these notes nailed, right? 
where how many years have you been playing now and maybe you don't know the notes, right? So just keep things in perspective. It's not as bad as you think. And maybe it wouldn't take you a month. I don't know. But you just, it's something you get to spend time with every day. So now let's input the yellow colored notes that I was talking about before. So if this is F and this is G, in between F and G, as I said at the beginning of this, we have F sharp, or we can call it G flat. Okay, that note has two different names, F sharp and G flat. We can call it either one of those things. Well, anytime there's a space, we're going to have that. G to A, we're going to have G sharp, sharp always moves up, or A flat, flat always moves back. Here we have A and B, so A sharp, B flat. So it's great because if somebody says B flat and you know B, you know absolutely B is 7, well then B flat is 6. You can find it that quick, it's instantaneous. F sharp, well where's F? F is 1, F sharp is at 2. You find it that fast. So that's what you're going to do with each string, but let's just take a little look here. So A, okay, A, B would be on the second fret. This would be A sharp or B flat, right? So A would be on this, or excuse me, B would be on the second fret. So already we have an issue with our one, three, five, seven, nine, and that's okay. A and B surround the first fret there. So that's something we have to learn. Now we get back on track. We have C, D, E, and then F and G surround this dot right here. Ooh, that sounded like the red hot chili peppers right so f and g right there so we have a b c d e f and g so on the fifth string again you think a is zero b is two c three d five e seven f is eight and G is 10, and you keep telling yourself that, and maybe you even say it out loud. Maybe even find someone to, to help you with this, right? And maybe they'll say, where's F? And you go, okay, so A, F is at the eighth fret. Okay, well, where's, where's G? Oh, it's at the 10th fret. Where's D? Oh, it's at the fifth fret, right? Where's B? It's at the second fret. And you get used to saying it, because the more you say it, and the more you think it, not just visualize it. Visualizing is huge. But say it, get your brain saying it. So where's where's E, seven, where's F, eight, where's G, 10, where's C, three, right? You just do that over and over and over. Now what I like to do with students when they get to this point is you start showing them relative connection. So for instance, G on the sixth string is here. Well, G on the fifth string is here. And you get used to seeing those. You make that relative connection, which is really great when you start learning maybe some arpeggios. Right, because you can start seeing how they all connect together off of that note, wherever it is that you're finding this. So G, or maybe it's B, right? So now we see that B up here on the sixth string is at seven. We actually have to go this direction to find B on the fifth string. Well, let's say we are going to build a B minor arpeggio. So we're looking for that D right there, right? So we build that. And I could even go this direction. Right? And again, that, that goes into a whole other conversation. But the point is, is that knowing where those notes are is really important. Okay? So there's our, our notes on the sixth string and our notes on the fifth string and how they connect together. Okay? Well, then we move to the fourth string. The fourth string is D. Well, then we have E, which is at the second fret. Again, it's not at the first fret. D and E surround that first fret, so we have to get to know that. Now we get back on track again. F, G, A, B. So this string is good to go all the way up through there. B is right here, and C is at the 10th fret. So we have D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. D, E, F, G, A, B, C. 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 10. And again, we get used to thinking about those. Well, where's G? And G? And G. Right, we try and find them in, on all strings. D, uh, oh, sorry, I said D and I went to G. Let's do D and D and D. Or even here. Okay whatever it might be, let's do F. So we have F here, we have F way up here, and we have F down here. So we get used to visualizing those. 
Now, because we've learned the fourth string, you might start visualizing your octaves. If you've ever done octaves before, like when you play a power chord or a bar chord or something, and this note right here on the sixth string and this note right here on the fourth string are octaves of each other. If this is G, so is this. You see? So you can see them that way as well. So D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. All right? And then moving to the G string. Again, G to A, we gotta skip that first string. So what we're noticing here is that we're skipping the first fret, I should say, sorry. We're skipping the first fret quite a lot. G to A, D to E, A to B, E to F, we use that first fret, right? But now we've got G to A. And then B is actually off a dot. Then we get on track, C, D, E, and then F. So G, A, B, so we have two of them that are off dots there. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, and then G. And again, same idea, let's go with G again. G, 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 okay, and let's think about this string. Okay, or let's choose A. Well, we have A here, A, or octave, right? We have A, a or F. Let's try F. 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 Sorry. F. I was thinking of something else. F. And in this string, we got to come all the way up here. You see that? So you just spend a little bit of time on each one and choose any note you want. And the goal is, is you don't have to be in any hurry. You just take your time through this thing. Okay? B string comes up. I might as well do the last one since we've done all these anyway. So B, C, is on the first fret. We're finally back on that first fret. And then D, E, now here's where we run into a problem. F, G, and A are all off the dots. F, G, and A. But that's okay. Half of it is on, half of it is off. That's an easy way of looking at this. B, C, D, E, F, G, A. That's actually quite simple. Okay? So again, going through our idea here, we have F, Right? And then next string we have F. And the next string we have F. Look how much we're moving around. F. And then we gotta go to this string and find F. Well, we have B, C, D, E. And then remember, F is off the dot. F, G, and A are all off dot. So there we go. Okay? So great way of finding all these. Let's try something we haven't tried. Let's try C. So there's C. There's C. Then we gotta go to the D string here. C is up there. And we gotta go to the next string. Okay, and C. And then the next string. Well, if you had C right here, you have C right there. So that's the basic idea is that you're learning two different things. You're learning to see the string as its own and you're visualizing those prime frets. And then when you want a secondary uh, or prime notes, so when you want a secondary note like F sharp or C sharp or whatever, you find that in your head just tilt it off of wherever your prime note is, right? Um, and then you start learning where those are relative to each string, and it just makes the whole thing a lot easier when you start learning, again, your scales. So when you're playing a scale, you're not maybe just seeing the you know fret numbers or the shape or something, but maybe you're actually seeing the notes that are being played, which would be a pretty amazing thing. So anyway, take care. I hope that helps you a little bit in your practice. This isn't something that needs to be tackled on its own, right? You should still be practicing your songs and you know, your theory or your licks or your solos or your technique or whatever. It's just a really wonderful thing to add on top of everything else that you're doing.